giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to We the North Recap, or in this case, Preview. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Parth Patel, Drone Act Coach for Team 610. I'm Tegan Poole, Strategy Mentor for Team 4476. And I'm Sohib Nadeem, Drive Coach for 5036. So, kicking it off, we're heading to Quebec, so I'm going to swap into French for a second. So, bienvenue à Québec. La première compétition cette semaine est la... Uh, cette et la Festival de Robotique à Montréal. L'année passée, l'événement était dominé par des équipes parvant de l'extérieur, mais cette année, il y a quelques équipes qui l'occupent pas cherchant le banner bleu. Les deux équipes à surveiller sont en 39-90 Tech for Kids et 33-60 Hyperion. Je ne serais pas surprise de voir ces deux équipes former une alliance et terminer dans le rang de l'émination inverse. Quelques équipes qui ont moins bien performé l'année passée, mais ont l'air prête cette année, sont 55-53 Robin Lyon et 33-86 Tonnante. Ils ont tous publié des vidéos de leurs robots et ligne et ils ont l'air très compétitifs. Tonnante l'a l'air de vivre toutes les capacités possibles, tandis que Robin Lyon semblait les cycles rapides qui reprenaient moins de points. Le prix de culture, c'est une compétition cerdée. Il me semble que le février en France versus America avec um, Robin Lyon et 15-11 Rolling Thunder, mais d'autres équipes comme Tech for Kids ont gagné le Chairman's Award dans la dernière année. And I promise that's the end of the French. <laughs> All right, over to Parth. <laughs> All right, so if you followed along with exactly every word she said, I promise you can at least follow along with what I'm saying because I'm going to do it all in English, bringing it back over to Ontario. Um, starting off the season for Ontario, we have an excellent group of teams who seem to really favor week one events. Uh, we've got defending world champions team 2708 Lake Effect Robotics going to be attending there. We've got all three of last year's winners. We've got the Waffles, Team 610, and Team 6110. Uh, and obviously, they won there last year together, so they're going to be looking to get the repeat of their medals. Um, also, I want to throw a couple of shout-outs. Uh, team 5885, who is going, and uh, they're, in my opinion, an up-and-coming team in Ontario. I loved Copperbot a couple of years ago. I hope they go with more copper this year. Um, but even if they don't, I'm really excited to see what they feel this year at Durham. Notable teams outside of uh, the, the ones I've already mentioned. Uh, obviously, you've got, uh, you know, perennial powerhouses, um, first Canadian team ever, Team 188. The Alpha Dogs, Team 4946, Team 2200. I'm personally really excited to see what their robot looks like. Um, they kind of tease their robot a little bit. Um, and, I'm, you know, they've demonstrated something that could be a level three climb. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, we've got Team 2994 and 5036. So obviously, Shohei, I'm going to shout out your team a little bit here. Uh, we've practiced a little bit together, so I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys do. Uh, and uh, this was a bit of a personal shout out uh, to sophomore team 6867. Um, I know the mentor on that team really well, and uh, I'm really excited for what they're what they're doing at that at that school. Um, really, the questions I have going into this event, obviously being a drive coach at a week one event, is this going to be a cycle fest and zero defense, or will we simply just get robots bashing each other all weekend long? I know I'm excited to be a part of setting the trend for how the game is played. But I'm also extremely nervous about being um, underprepared uh, against so many of the top talented teams in Ontario. Elevators, arms, maybe even shooters are going to be on display here. And we don't really know how all of this is going to unfold. But one thing is for sure, Ontario never disappoints and Ontario is always ready to play. Um, so with that, I think let's kick off some discussion. Uh, and chat, feel free to chime in. 
Um, I'm going to throw this off to Shoheb. Shoheb, what do you think about week one and defense? What do you think the role is going to be for defense for week one? So there's been a lot of discussion on Chief um, about defense being an effective player in this game. And I think it's something that First has obviously realized because they only allow the one robot over. And we practiced under a little bit of defense from uh, one of the backup bots at Crescent. And it was impossible to score. It became very difficult. Um, there haven't been that many games where it's completely shut teams down like that. So it'll be interesting to see what teams do to avoid it. I think smart teams will be sending a robot down to the other side of the field more often than not to try and play some defense. I think just popping in on that too, one thing that we noticed, because we were also at Crescent when we were doing the practicing, is with, you know, there's the incentive of ranking points. If you're working on a rocket and someone gets in your way halfway through the match, there's no way you're going to be able to, you know, keep doing it. And you're not going to be able to start the other one and finish it and get the ranking point. So defense, it's probably not going to be pay played in qualifications. But if it was, it would really be a game changer. But I know our driver has been looking to do some defense. He wasn't able to last year. So you might see a little bit coming out. No spoilers, but should be... Uh, I don't know. I like the defense. It makes it all the more fun. So can I just say, all three of us are competing. Let's just have a secret pact that if we're in a match against each other, no one plays defense. We'll just give everybody 4RP and just see everybody in the semis and finals. We'll decide it all. I will, time. yeah. We'll do your rocket. <laughs> you do our yeah. rocket. We'll call it a day. Thank God we're not no, recording we this right here. <laughs> oh, that's I, Okay, you've got the ship. You've got the ship. Yeah, so you guys, okay, you guys just stay out of the way and let us do the rocket, and then no one gets in each other's way, and we're just going to get 4RP, right? Mm -hmm. I am I know already that's not going to happen. I just know it. Yeah, um, like, I don't know, the rocket is almost like, it's like the clickbait of the game, right? Because it's, you know, some teams will be like, oh, we can solo the rocket. Like, it's week one, okay? Like, <laughs> it's not going to happen, probably. <laughs> you might get it with two teams working together, but I don't think you're going to see anyone soloing the rocket. Uh, week one but if i'm wrong like let me be wrong that'd be dope see well, also i think sorry go ahead Trey. uh i'll put money down on if there's a half decent defender trying to block two teams doing the rocket they'll be able to it's like a five foot scoring area they just have to be in there and with reaching high being all tipsy it's very difficult to score with like one defender so i think if a team really wants to deny the rocket they can do it pretty easily because once you put two game pieces up you're already invested in that rocket and um, it's even Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, I think defense for the RP is definitely something that people kind of all agree on. I think there's some consensus there. Uh, but there's been, you know, obviously 610 started a thread, you know, Jonathan Norris started a thread about how much we think defense is going to, and I think he used some strong terms that people kind of had issue with, but uh, the exact words he used were ruin the game. And let's take a step back from that and just, just kind of talk about, like, do you honestly believe that defense is going to be played at a level where doesn't matter how good you are. Like, you could be the best team in the world. Somebody's going to be able to shut you down. I don't know if it would be a full-on shutdown, but it's definitely going to, I think, cut your cycles in half. If you've got someone playing defense on you specifically, and yes, there's only one person, so the, the Lions can do their own thing, but if you're forced to, you know, say they're in front of your your human player portal, if all three robots have to go to one station to get their hatches, like, obviously, that either takes some serious coordination or, you know, a stroke of luck. It's not necessarily, you know... A defender who is just a defense robot can still cause havoc. Um, it'll take a lot longer to cycle, for sure, but I don't think it ruins the game. Um, you know, it, it makes it a little more challenging. You just have to think on your feet. I think it adds a new dynamic to the game, because... Um... We haven't had a game where defense has been as effective as we presume it is going to be in this game. So it'll be interesting to see how much one robot can do um, and whether teams decide to go with uh, the triple cycle strategy or send just a robot down every match no matter what just to you know make sure at max they have three robots on their side of the field because it's a very tiny place to maneuver around. It's good, though, if you've got, especially in, a, in quals, you know, it's especially, okay, if you didn't get what I said with Montreal, basically it's a very top-heavy event. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of teams that aren't necessarily the best at scoring, but they're still going to be useful. And that's the nice thing about this game is that even lower-level teams can still be helpful in eliminations and qualifications. The one thing that'll be interesting to see is how defense changes from quals to eliminations. 
because there's no bonus for the rocket RP. So there's probably going to be a little more play on the lower areas just because it doesn't take as long uh, to cycle most of the time. So from that, like there might be a little bit of a shift there. I don't know what you guys think about that, though. Um, I think kind of tangent to that and kind of tying it with what Dan's saying in chat there, um, I would talk about, you know, like there's positional defense, right, which is, you know, you park yourself in front of a, a, some objective on the field. And then there's obviously man-on-man defense. Like you're following the robot around. You're just bullying them around the field. I don't know if I 100% think that positional defense is the way to play defense in this game. I don't know if that's the case. I think this is more of a, you kind of want to bully the robot around, hit them every time they try to score and try to line it up. But with that in mind, there's an interesting sort of, let's call it a paradox that kind of occurs where if you decide to park in for the rocket, no robot can score over another robot just because the 30-inch frame perimeter extension rule, uh, most robots are going to be that size with bumpers and everything. You're probably not going to be able to score another over another robot. So if I just park in front of a rocket, I'm definitely denying you RP. But then the question becomes, if a robot now comes in and is trying to score over me, are you? is that robot pinning me? I just want to put this out there because this question really bothers me because that should not be a pin. If a robot drives in and parks in front of the rocket and I'm just trying to score a game piece, I shouldn't be pinning them. But um, I've heard kind of people say, well, yeah, that's still pinning because you're not letting them get out of there. And like, I get all of that. I do. I get all of that. But if I'm parking in front of the rocket, that's my choice, not the offensive robot. I don't know if there should be a pin count there. So I haven't taken my ref test yet, in all honesty. But I think what you're saying makes sense. So it's just pinning, especially when you're the one trying to score over the other robot. Yeah, like PJ's saying, PJ the ref is saying, it's very situational. It's something where I personally wouldn't want to start a pin count from it, mostly because, you know, almost like you're choosing to go somewhere. The robot that, like, the robot trying to score is choosing to go there, and it's almost like pin at your own risk. But the way the rules are written, I wouldn't be surprised to also see a team update come out clarifying it at some point, probably after HQC's tell week one works out. Maybe something like uh, a defender on the other side, just you, there's no pin count on that. I feel like that's a simple way to implement it. I don't know if they'll go that far, um, but that's a possibility. Taking going back to what you brought up earlier, going from qualifications to eliminations um, and strategy changing, how do you guys see teams using the null hatch panels um, during qualifications and moving on to eliminations? There's definitely going to be more. Uh, there's going to be, sorry, I was replying to someone in chat. So basically for a limbs, right, it's all you're going to see teams start to do the rocket in the sandstorm period. Sorry, in the quals, you're going to see them do it because they want to get the head start on the RP. So, yeah, for them, sure, put the null hatches on. In a limbs, you're not going to see them as much because teams are going to be going for the autos likely on the cargo ship. Um, you can say in quals, yes, it's worth more to put a cargo in because then that hatch is basically worth five points, you know, getting more bang for your buck out there. But it's less likely, especially on the farther ones, you'll definitely see some null panels and you'll probably still see a few in the limbs, but it's definitely gonna be less common because I expect more teams during the Sandstorm will be going to the cargo ship instead of the rockets. Um, yeah, and, and tying that back into the defense argument, I think, at least for my robot, I, I don't know if this is true for all robots, but um, I think it's easier to score cargo under defense than it is to score hatch panels under defense. It requires much less precision. Uh, you don't need to, you know, you don't have to worry about the stupid bolts that get in the way when you're trying to score uh, the hatch panels. Uh, and for those of you who haven't seen a real field, those will get in your way, uh, unfortunately. Um, but overall, I think defense will be more effective against hatch panel scoring robots than uh, than against cargo scoring robots. So personally, I, I'm, I mean, I'm not giving away my strategy or anything, but it seems like it would make sense to go with more null panels and uh, during the standstorm, just focus on scoring balls during the match. Um, one of the things that it was a small enough discussion on Chief and, and other people have talked about it is defense on uh, the end game. You know, traditionally, the way the end games are designed is you have enough time and enough room to try and stop a robot from pulling off uh, an amazing end game or even just a successful end game. Do you think defense on the end game is a thing? And, and, and how would you go about playing that if, if you were a robot trying to stop another robot from getting the, you know, have level three climb or, or whatever it was? 
it's better in a limbs because you're not like if you touch the robot on the rocket with like 20 seconds left you give them that rp but if it's in you know if it's in a limbs there there's not that massive penalty yes there'll still be points but is it worth it you know is the foul points that you're going to get for hitting them in the last 20 seconds worth stopping them from a climb say it was citrus they've got the triple climb if you can stop them like by all means necessary obviously you're going to want to look at doing it in qual in quals it's harder because you lose the ranking point and obviously you don't want to do that you'll still see some teams trying to do it and i would like expect it's almost like pushing others into the rope like last year you know or uh, 2017 where you'd try to like block a hang and sometimes you'd accidentally give up a free hang if your driver wasn't amazing so You'll see it more in a limbs. That's kind of like not really a hot take. It's maybe like a medium to mild take, uh, but it would I would suspect it's going to happen. Yeah, especially if a robot can only get on to level three, they stand to block potentially twelve points, and say they don't make it back to their side to park, uh, they're still profiting delta nine points. So um, I agree with you there. I don't think we'll see it as much in qualifications, but in eliminations, um, I think we'll see it a lot more when teams don't have to worry about giving away a free RP. Let's switch focus from defense for a bit. And uh, I just want to highlight some Ontario teams that we've seen, not necessarily competing week one, but um, I want to throw some love around for, for teams that aren't competing this week, but uh, you know, had some awesome reveal videos or just cool robots. Uh, the one that I want to throw out there and the boys on my team are already, they already know which robot I'm going to be talking about. And they're already shutting off the Twitch stream. Um, I want to talk about, Team 4976, um, they've built a shooter this year. And uh, if you know anything about 610 last year, um, we built a shooter in a what you could argue is a non-shooting game. And I was basically banned from uh, from saying the S word, uh, which is the word shooter uh, on the team this year. Uh, but I'm really excited somebody's done it. I really wanted to do it. And I can't wait to see how they do. The double-sided shooter, I just, like, that's so cool. I, I, I was thinking just like a regular shooter, but... Shooting from both sides, that's that's kind of neat. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, ha- to, to what they what they pull off. You can see that in Quebec, too. 5553 has released a robot that can shoot. They can't shoot up to level 3 from what I've been able to tell, but it is a shooter up to level 2 for the cargo. So watch Montreal. You're not going to be able to understand the... Uh, you're not going to be able to understand the stream, but I promise it's worth it. Speaking of these teams you guys are uh, shouting out over here, even though it's week one, there's a lot of good teams that are competing nice and early. Parth and Tegan, who do you think are good teams uh, contending for the FRC Top 25 week one? Um, I'm going to just go out right and start listing teams. Uh, stop me when you think I'm, I've exhausted them all. Uh, 188, 49, 46. <laughs> you know, um, I would want to throw 68, 67 on there. I just love that team. Uh, team 45, 25. I didn't talk about them when I did the preview. But if you know anything about Ontario, that's Team Hat Hat Hat, uh, as uh, Copioli's dubbed them. Uh, they are one of the fastest cyclers, uh, you know, in the last couple of games. Uh, they build simple robots, but they drive them uh, like crazy. I'm really looking forward to what they do. You know, obviously, I want to throw Waffles on there. 5036 has been in the mix for top teams in Ontario. Uh, you know, Lake Effect Robotics, defending world champions. I'm sure they've got a lot of things going on on that team, uh, especially after winning a world championship. I'm sure that helps. Uh, and a little bit of self-love. i got to throw myself on there. I know my boys would get mad at me if I didn't, but uh, 6'10", I think we'll be somewhat competitive at the very least. Oh, and uh, XW00. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. That's dope. Uh, for Top 25, I'm thinking, you know, okay, I'm not going to plug myself, but I am going to plug 6'10". We worked with them. We did it last year. We did it this year. Uh, maybe a repeat. I'm not going to jinx it before we get there, but they're definitely a solid robot to look at. Uh, if you go to Montreal, you've got 3360, Hyperion, and 3990. Uh, the two of them, they've always been tight uh, contenders for who's the slightly better Quebec team, so wouldn't be surprised to see at least one, if not both of them, make it onto the list just because they've both released some pretty cool robots. Uh, other shout-outs in uh, Ontario, you've got 4525, like Parth said. Someone else I'm going to be excited to see is actually all the rookies. You know, and there's probably going to be at least one rookie that's going to, like, surprise us all, right? There's going to be someone that gets it right, that doesn't overbuild, that doesn't think that, you know, they can do everything. And they'll be, you know, they'll be impactful at both of the events happening this week. 
All right. I think we're pretty much at the end of our time here with uh, We the North recap. I want to thank everybody from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, we did a little bit of an Ontario special this week, uh, but next week you can expect some of the other hosts from We the North coming back. Um, but uh, thank you once again. And if you want more First Robotics in your life, like we all do, then we ask that you let others know about this show. Uh, we're going to be on doing uh, region recaps every week. We've got shows uh, you know, on Tuesdays. We've got lots of things going on on uh, first updates now. If you've got a few bucks to share and help support uh, what we do here, uh, please go ahead and share. Uh, if not, that's cool too. Just spread the word because all we want to do is get the whole community out here, have some great discussions, uh, have a great time. On behalf of myself, Tegan, Shohaib, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Uh, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat, of course. Our next show is Best of the West. Thank you, and we'll talk to you next time on We the North Recap. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.